Okay, welcome to the sixth module for our sports tourism course. And for this specific module, we will talk about sports tourism markets um, in specific to experience. And for this first video lecture, we'll talk about the anticipation phase of the sports tourist. So we'll talk about the motivations and the decision making that happens prior uh, to the actual travel towards the uh, sports attraction or the sports event. So basically, the anticipation phase of the sports tourism experience includes information search, decision making, planning of the formulation of expectations are important aspects of the visitor experience in the anticipation phase. And of course, when you go back to our um, discussion on uh, tourism and marketing, a part of that is promotion and how do we do that? by uh, word of mouth, uh, via advertisements and promotions, and through professional outlets such as travel agencies, information centers, and probably you can also have uh, certain um, information coming from you know, sports organizations if it's specific to a sports attraction. Now, as we explained, uh, the type of uh, sports tourist basically also influences the extent to which the information uh, is being filtered in relation to the sports destination. And of course, it also affects the way uh, that person makes a decision in regards to uh, going to and spending some time in a sports tourism destination. So the first type, we'll talk about the elite athletes. Um, for elite athletes, uh, the considerations for them to be able to decide on a specific sports tourism destination is the availability of competition and suitable high-quality training facilities, syempre, while destination choice may be determined by acclimatization or altitude training requirements. So for example, yung picture dito ni Pacquiao, diba? prior to his big fights in the United States, he usually goes to a, uh, an area na medyo mataas ang altitude to be able to train his his lungs to be able to train him in high altitude para mas tumaas ang kanyang endurance. So that is also one consideration that they may take into consideration for them to be able to um, condition themselves prior to the game. no? And you know, for countries na who are going from one place, no, from their country of origin, which has a different climate than the sports, uh, destination that they were going to uh, usually what they do is that they choose another destination na para masanay lang ang kanilang katawan in the climate that they're going to be exposed to in the sports destination where they'll be doing their professional sports event para when it comes the time na sila ay mag uh, uh, mag perform na no? sanay na dun sila sa klima in that specific sports destination and usually for decision making, uh, if our, these are really you know top notch professional elite athletes, usually the ones who decide on the sports destination that they'll be going to in relation to training and also in terms of you know actual engagement in their professional sports are their sports managers with tour operators and disseminated through targeted niche marketing. So usually for elite athletes, hindi ito yung mass promotion or mass advertisements. Usually the tour operators would, you know, target their promotions to specific uh, sports ecosystems, no? to to coaches, diba? to sports managers, to recruitment uh, agents, no, para yung kanilang ino offer na package ay very specific to a sports destination na need ng elite athlete na iyon. So, in contrast to elite athletes, iba naman ang ninahanap ng mga general sport holiday tourists who are basically just incidental sports tourists in a given destination. So, yes, of course, uh, they will be attracted by, you know, good sports facilities with high standards, with good diversity and uniqueness, something that they don't see in their um, origin, no area of origin. But also, one of their consideration in even considering a sports attraction within their itinerary is the availability of holiday regions. Malapit ba siya doon sa mga cultural and heritage and ecotourism sites which, which they are also interested in? Is that part of the tourism cluster that, that they want to visit no, within the package that they have so that no, kasi sila nga yung mga uh, sila nga yung mga tourists that hindi, sila, hindi nila sinasadya yung lugar just for the sport. No? Sinasadya nila yung lugar 
for other tourism activities and when sports attractions are there and they are also interested in it sinasama nila pero if it's not within the cluster or the package that they are getting usually they won't consider sports tourism to be a part of the itinerary so what will um, influence the decision making of this incidental sports tourist in relation to you know um, engaging in a sports attraction or event is you know the presence of standard tourism information services you no know, the presence of the tourism board in the given sports destination or tourism destination such as travel agents destination brochures in the decision making and travel planning process so probably if they have a one-on-one -on -one talk with their travel agent and they are you know uh, negotiating and constructing together an ideal travel package for this uh, specific individuals and they happen to like a specific sport no the travel agent will be helping that person in order to make most of the money that uh, that Tourists is, tourists is paying for and will ensure that all of the needs, not just the sports needs and the cultural heritage tourism needs will be met, you know, of course, at a given certain price. Now, what are the factors that influences yung visitor expectations when they get to a specific um, sports tourism attraction or when they are thinking about a sports tourism attraction. Siyempre, una, their engagement in the sport and their knowledge of the sport. Siyempre, if they have more knowledge of the sport, the expectation would be higher and the expectation would be more detailed and complex to those who aren't really engaged in the sport or they won't really be expecting too much if they don't know about the sport being uh, talked about. Next also, siyempre, the demographic profile. Uh, siyempre, the younger individuals would more likely go into a more extreme, more adventurous type of sports compared to, you know, older individuals. And probably for children, they would go to, you know, camps instead of really um, sophisticated elite sports events. Next is travel career stage. Siyempre, for those who do frequent traveling, no, and have seen... Uh, so many things already, different uh, sport, uh, tourism attractions, cultural heritage, and they're considering um, sports tourism as uh, their new, no, their new destination. Siyempre, it will affect their expectation, and they will be comparing the whole tourism experience with the other experiences that they had in their previous destination. Next is their experience of the actual sport, if they are actually engaged in that sport. And the extent to which they engage in that sport in relation to um, recreation or self-expression. Now, when we go back to our very first module, we talk about push and pull factors that um, influences the motivations of a certain um, tourist to go to a certain destination. And of course, for different types of tourism, definitely it has a different push and pull factor but for sports tourism there are also uh, different push and pull factors now as a review when we say push factors these are intrinsic factors or the psychological factors that drives a person to go to a certain destination and leave for a while the area of origin now the motivation to go to a certain sports um, destination will be based on personality you know and we can go back to our previous module on the different personality and behavioral archetypes of those who wants to go to a certain sport and the attitude of the individual in relation to a sport Siyempre, if this person likes sports then most likely he will be motivated or she will be motivated to go to a specific sports uh, attraction in a certain destination or if there's a perceived needs you no know? uh, kun siya po ay he's, he's an elite athlete you no know, who wants training or is going to engage in a certain elite event syempre perceived need na yun. so that's a push factor for that person to go to a certain sports destination outside his area of origin you know or for this person is um uh, wants to get healthy or wants to get fit or wants to um do self expression through through sport diba so that can also push a person to go out of the area of origin and visit a destination with the sports attraction component other push factors is siyempre release from everyday life you know because again sports is also recreation and of course it also um 
uh, is an escape for us from our stressful lives. Some people also go to sports events and sports attraction to search for new friends, no camaraderie, no. And I've seen people who go to marathons, dragon boat competitions, and Sparta races. Na eventually would build friendships within that specific visit, no. Next, the need to develop friendships and a sense of belongingness, as we've said earlier, and also an emotional release, no? again, because it's a stressful life, and of course, sport can also be a form of self-expression, and then the opportunity to do things that cannot be done at home. Again, if you are living in an urban area, and in your urban area, there are no f uh, natural fields for you to be able to do certain sports, so you have to go out of that specific um, area and go to a certain in destination that allows you to practice the sport that you like for example you like biking but in an urban area of course you know extreme biking isn't something that you have uh, the space to do so so you leave your area of origin for an excursion or an overnight so that you can be able to get into a landscape where you'll be able to practice your extreme biking so yeah because these things can't be done in your place of origin Next, we talk about pull factors. Pull factors are the characteristics of the destination that pull people in out of their or can, uh, country or uh, areas of origin. So basically, the pull factors are extrinsic outside the individual and also are very cultural in nature. So what are the um, extrinsic factors that uh, pull people into sports destinations. Siyempre, you know, we discussed this in our marketing module, um, price. No? Of course, if the price is competitive and it is uh, perceived to be uh, a value for money, then of course, it would attract more tourists into that specific attraction destination image Siyempre, if this image is known to become a very uh, to be a very good uh, place where in that specific sport is being conducted then of course mas makaka-attract siya ng mas maraming tourists then of course marketing promotion to be able to inform people that hey there's a sports tourism um attraction in a given area and so people who are in need of sports um experiences can go there now, how is destination image in sports tourism differing from other types of tourism, like for example, cultural, heritage tourism, gastronomic tourism, or dark tourism? Um, definitely, you know, in terms of destination image, there are physical attributes that are specific to um, sports that are different to cultural and heritage tourism for example the attractions are different no the landscapes are different the landscapes and the field and the stadia they have to um, accommodate a given sport no there's a specific sport that has to there, there's a spe there are specificities in the sport um that you know must be catered to by the given destination Next, of course, it's also very much activity-based unless ito ay sports museum or nostalgia sports tourism. But most of sports tourism attractions are event-based. No? Activity siya. It's either this person is being engaged in that specific activity as an athlete or as a, you know, a re recreational player in that specific sport no? or someone who's just spectating that specific sport. Ayun nga, like I said, you know, sporting facilities is a very important factor in the destination image of sports tourism. Kaya nga, di ba, uh, one of the goals why we made the aquatic center in Clark, no, Pampanga, so beautiful, so world class, because eventually after the SEA Games, we would like to market it as a destination for elite athletes to be a place where they could go for training. And uh, I think uh, hopefully, you know, after COVID, that 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 uh, objective will be realized. And of course, for those sporting events that isn't really uh, man-made, like for example, um, yung sa surfing, uh, surfing beaches, na siya hindi yun man-made, no? Or for example, yung um, sa skiing, no? Mountain ranges for skiing. Um, these are also. Uh, uh, connected to the destination image and sports attraction. And of course, uh, in terms of destination image, we also consider um, 
abstract attributes no these are less readily observable and measured no so examples of factors that influence a destination image that are abstract in nature syempre the atmosphere of the place the crowding safety of the place no so things that we have to improve on in the Philippines in relation to it being a sports tourism destination the ambience of the place and basically the general feel when a certain person is there watching or engaging in a specific sport now uh there is a specific um area of study uh about sports fans and it is it has been said that sports fans is one factor that elite sports tourists take into consideration uh when they choose a specific sport destination or when they try to organize a specific sporting event that has international appeal Uh, for example, no, wala siguro masyadong mag invest ng mga football events, international football events in the Philippines because wala dito yung sports fans ng football. No, probably you'd see that more in Latin America or in uh in Europe, no, but definitely in the Philippines, hindi siguro siya yung number one na iisipin ng mga sikat na mga elite footballers na po dito tayo pupunta kasi we will for sure no kikita tayo dito and there will be a lot of fans. So, so specifically for elite sports tourists, isa sa mga factors for them to consider a certain country as a sports destination is the nature of the sports fans. And of course, there are specific Um, uh, categorization of sports fans and of course for sports tourism organizers and developers kasama ito in the consideration of organizing the whole event kasama na yung mga tourism systems in that event so the first type of sports fans are the passionate partisans so these are hardcore supporters who attend games regularly regardless of inconveniences their moods and identities are closely linked to the successes and failures of their own team so probably ito yung mga for example in UAAP no um even if hindi mo masyadong bet yung mga players no or medyo inconvenienced ka na sumali in that area because it's because of time or because of some inconveniences, a-attend ka pa rin because you are a passionate partisan of that specific team that you're rooting for. So, these are really yung tinatawag ating hardcore fans. Siyempre, for an elite sports tourist, no, pupunta ako sa isang lugar at magpe-perform ako ng isang exhibition game in a place where I have, you know, passionate partisans because hindi masasayang ang punta ko doon dahil alam ko that there's, there are people who's going to watch and root for me. Next, we have champion followers. So these are like lesser of the passionate partisans and basically they're less fanatical. They change their allegiance or their allegiance remains held in abeyance until their team starts winning some games. So ito naman yung uh, hindi siya masyadong consideration for sports elite athletes. no. But basically they could, if a, a sports elite athlete wins a game, then probably these are possible people that could be watching his or her game in the future. Next, we have the reclusive partisans. Their interest in the game and commitment to the team is strong, but they attend games infrequently, but they're interested in the team more than the game. So, for example, yung, ito nga, yung sa UAAP, when we watch basketball or volleyball, no, dadayo tayo from one place to another to be able to watch their games. No, Not necessarily sports tourism in general, but yon. So, these are examples of rec- uh, reclusive partisans. Now, where our allegiance is more on the team more than the, you know, game. Next, we have the theater goers. They primarily geek seek sorry entertainment through sport but are not necessarily attached to a particular team so uh, a, a good example for this is for example yung mga dumadayo from different parts of uh Calabar zone to watch for example yung mga one in an one annual events like for example the cheer dancing competition and these people they're not really attached to a specific team kasi wala naman yung university nila doon no but uh, they're really just cheer dancing aficionados and they're there to really nitpick on the different um cheer dancing moves choreography and stunts no so these are examples of theater goers they're really more into watching the spectacle but not really going there for the team 
So usually for uh, events like this, no, like uh, cheer dancing competitions, usually ang makukuha nating mga sports fans dito ay mga theater goers. Next, we have the aficionados. They're attracted to exciting games and also to games that involve star players. They're interested in demonstration of skill, tactical complexity, and aesthetic pleasure which take priority over the outcome of the game. So usually, they would go to be watching, you know, the star players and basically studying that star player's moves and appreciating the performance of that star player. But it's not really um, into like who wins or who loses in the game, but it's really more into the performance and how is it done in a specific sport. Now, in terms of very elite events, like for example, the Olympics, there are also studies that uh, explored what are the motivations of people who go to, uh, to destinations where Olympics happens. Now, so what are the reasons why people go to the Olympics, which can also be our basis when we you know, make large-scale um, uh, hallmark events like this? We have, of course, it's a... You know, we attend Olympics because it's a once in a lifetime experience, diba? So, malam, hindi madalas na merong Olympics in a given destination within your lifetime, no? So, a-attend ka doon. Next, we have experiencing firsthand the excellence of athletic competition kasi during that time, by that time, no? We are seeing the best of the best of the world in relation to all the sports that are available in a given, you know, Olympic Games. And of course, for sure, no people go there because there's that international party atmosphere. No, lahat ng mga pum, uh, lahat ng mga pumupunta doon coming from different parts of the world, and that appeal that you are within a part of an international community all at the same place is an appeal why people attend Olympics. And of course, the cultural experience within the place where the sports uh, activities are being done and the historical significance of that given destination as well. So in this video, we talked about uh, the, the information sources and decision making done by different types of sports tourists. We also talked about motivations, the push and pull factors that are related to sports tourism. We also talked about different types of sports fans and how they could be motivations for elite sports athletes to go to a certain a destination to perform sport. And finally, we talked about the different motivations uh, that people have when they go to a certain Olympic event.